Well, shalom and God bless you. And welcome back to another edition of Eagle's Eyes, a prophetic end time broadcast revealing the soon coming appearance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what we must do to prepare. Beloved, I want to give God all the praise, all the glory, all the honor for his goodness because he is so good and his mercy endures forever. First of all, I want to welcome all of our new subscribers to FGM TV. Welcome to our online family. It's such an honor and a privilege that you have chosen this station. And we want to give God praise for your subscription. We pray that this channel blesses you and enriches you in your Christian walk with the Lord. Well, beloved, we have so much to be thankful for. We just had the election and Donald Trump won. And, you know, people prayed all over America. There were prayer vigils going on even in Washington, D.C., Christians, organizations gathering together in parks or online prayer meetings. So I know that the children of God, the body of Christ, really humbled themselves before the Lord for this election. If for that reason only, the Lord had mercy because the spirit of the Lord has been speaking to his prophets that judgment is coming. That does not negate that judgment is coming just because Donald Trump is in office. All the prophecies are continuing. We still are in a state of intimate dangers. The prophetic words that a storm is coming, that nuclear war is coming, that invasion is coming, and the fall of America prophesied in Revelations chapter 18. God's word does not return void. What the Lord has spoken, it shall come to pass. However, as Christians, as long as it's not written in the Bible as sealed in stone, <laughs> then we have a relationship with our king and he's so merciful. Just like Abraham pleaded for Lot, for Sodom and Gomorrah, when the Lord said he was going to destroy it. And Abraham said, hey, if there's only 50 righteous, you know, would you save the city? If there's only, he kept bringing it down. That's how the Lord is. Some of the judgments we can push back and delay because of God's mercy. And some, the Lord says, the judgment is set. Now, in this situation about Babylon, we know she's going to be destroyed because Revelation tells us we know that this is a season of judgment and we know a storm is coming. The Lord said that is set. But much of our prayer is pre preparing ourselves, minimizing the casualties of war, minimizing the casualties against God's people and those who we know and bringing in righteousness, deliverance, salvation, redemption through these judgments. You know what the Bible says? In judgment, Lord, please remember mercy. And so for, for all of God's judgments, they're to bring us closer to Jesus, is to do something in us to bring a brokenness and repentance that we may be saved. I don't know how many of you came to God on the mountaintop. Most of us came in the valley. God is a good God in good times and in bad times. I wanted to go over my prophetic dream that I had about four years ago. And the reason why I'm telling this dream is very important because this dream is not over yet. I have declared in some of our videos before that I definitely believe that Trump was going to win the presidency by votes. However, I was very unsure because of my dream four years ago, whether or not he's going to occupy the office or occupy the White House in January 21st long term for a long period of time. He has four years, but will he get in? It's number one question. Number two question is how long he'll be in. Why? Because there are still threatenings on his life. Just this today, I saw lots of people from Iran posting videos how they were going to get him. We know that there are plots to take his life. And this is what this dream revealed. Yes, we can pray. And that's what we need to do. We need to pray and intercede because this dream that I had four years ago basically revealed two things. One, that Biden was going to fall over because of dementia, would no longer be in the race and also would no longer be fit to carry his, out his presidential duties, and he was walked over. That has already been fulfilled. That's what happened. We rarely see him. He's in the background. He dropped out of the presidential race. Kamala Harris took his place, and of course she's lost. But that first part, that part of the vision has already been fulfilled. But the second part of the vision 
was a president who was a president before, was coming back into office, and I knew that was Donald Trump, and a terrible calamity happened, and he was assassinated. Because of his assassination, there was extreme civil unrest in the nation, and the, the country was over. The country was done. It just split both sides, and that was the exact time in my dream when the heavy civil unrest occurred, and this is also prophesied by Dimitri Dudeman and Henry Groover and my spiritual father, Pastor David Wilkerson, civil unrest coming in the nation. The nation is attacked, lots of fires, New York City on fire, Washington on fire. This is soon as our enemies see the heavy civil unrest. That is when America is destroyed as a nation uh, on that day, the day of the Lord, when all the nations come and destroy Babylon in one hour. But she will be attacked with, by a nuke before that. Okay, so there is a nuclear assault on America, on certain cities before that. But the big thing comes when there's heavy civil unrest, because there's also suitcase nuke. We will have things like that before. We need to pray. Am I saying that it's, it's cut in stone? No. Sometimes God gives us dreams that we can pray and abort many of the vices of the evil one. Urgency to pray for President Donald J. Trump. He is not in office yet. And the Lord showed me in prayer a plot to take him out before he entered office in January. Is it possible that Camilla Harris could come back in office in January? Anything's possible. If they knock out Trump, anything is possible because he was running against her. Yes, she performed very terribly. Yes, she's shown her character. Yes, she's very evil. Yes, we know that this is the worst thing that ever could happen to the nation. But if they knock out Donald J. Trump, everything unwinds. And that's what happened in my dream. He was killed and immediately we were running to bunkers. I was running to an underneath bunker because missiles were coming to strike America. I'm not a prophet, I'm just a watchman. I'm watching and I'm here to, to tell you what I see so that we can decree, we can declare, we can pray and we can ask for mercy. And also in line with this, the Lord gave me Psalm 64. I just wanna go over that quickly. It says, hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly they shoot at him and fear not. They encourage himself in an evil matter. They commune of snares privily. They say, who shall see them? They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search, both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. But ending on verse seven, but God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they shall be wounded. We serve a God of war. We serve a God who's mighty. We saw his mighty awesome power as this election was overturned. How great our God is. He's the one who sets up kings and puts them down. And he's also the one who defends his people. Through all of these insurrections, through all this warfare, this persecution against God's people, maybe you're going through persecution in this hour. Lots of Christians are going through persecution in this hour. It just seems like this is an hour of trial, but it's a time of persecution and warfare as in the spirit, so in the natural, also for God's children. And I just want to encourage you today, if you've been going through warfare, if you've been going through a people saying all manner of evil against you, we are supposed to bless, amen? But God is a God of judgment and vengeance belongs to him. I wanna encourage you to stand and continue to press into God because we have a promise here. He says, God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they shall be wounded. That arrow is also nuclear warfare. That's also his sword, his weapons of indignation as he punishes the nations. So we have him uh, avenging his children on a personal individual scale. And he will also to bring vengeance on the nations that need to be disciplined. So we serve a God who's a judge in heaven and he judges righteously. And on that, we can take confidence and we can rest knowing that God has got our back. I hope that encourages you today. I want to share before we close, I'm not going to go long today, what the Lord gave me last night. And I asked the Lord some questions. I said, Lord, do things change because Trump has gotten office? 
because everyone is saying, oh, the wars are going to end now. Uh, he's going to make America great again. But the Lord said, nothing has changed. As a matter of fact, he said, this is the time that the rain is about to fall and tell his people get ready because we're going home. You see, Donald Trump represents the beginning of the end of days, a new era transitioning into the tribulation period. And beloved, we should not be here for his four years because I believe that the bride is out by the end of December, that we're not crossing over into 2025. That's really the conviction I have. I'm not saying God said, <laughs> it's how I feel in my spirit that we will not be here in 2025. So all the Christians that want to be here for a four year D Donald Trump pro prophecy, it means you may be here during the tribulation. The church is not supposed to be here. It's more a time of Jacob's trouble. And if God has placed him in that office, it's so that he will be the president who's best able to handle it during those four years when God's judgment is raining on America and everything is falling apart. So the Lord said, the storm is coming. The storm is upon us. The rain is falling. It's time to get in the ark. The ark is about to go. The nukes are about to fly. Civil unrest is already breaking out in America and things are going to start unraveling very quickly. So beloved, we need to look up for our redemption draws nigh. Jesus is coming. And this is the scripture he gave me. I'm so excited to tell you what this scripture is. Four o'clock in the morning, the Lord gave me this chapter. Second Kings chapter two, it's a story about Elijah and Elijah. Now I'm not going to read the whole thing because we all know, okay, the story of Elijah and Elijah, Elijah, the prophet had a spiritual son, Elijah, who was in the school of the prophets and Elijah clung to him. Okay. Like John clung to Jesus. He never let him go. <laughs> uh, during the school of the prophets, many of the prophets were saying to Elijah, Hey, Elijah, do you know that today, meaning during this season, the Lord is going to take away your master today? And Elijah would say, I know it, like, shut up. <laughs> you know? Well, anyway, chapter two, verse one, and it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elijah from Gilgal. Now, I believe, first of all, that this story is a prophetic Comparison has a prophetic significance and alignment with the rapture of the bride of Christ. So this is what, I, what the Lord showed me. This whirlwind, you know, the Bible says that during the day of the Lord, the Lord shall bring his whirlwind of judgment that shall, that it shall fall upon the heads of the wicked. This whirlwind is nuclear war. This whirlwind is a storm that brews. It's a storm that brews on the nations. It's God's judgment. Okay, so in 2 Kings chapter 2, we have four places that Elijah told Elijah to wait for him. He was going to pass over and Elijah says, no, I'm, I'm going to go with you. So in 2 Samuel chapter 2, Elijah and Elijah cross over four places. Number one, Gilgal. Number two, Bethel. Number three, Jericho. And number four, Jordan. And Gilgal is a circle of stones. So that's a place where they made a covenant together. Bethel is the house of God. So there, you know, they go into the house of God. They, there, it's like an introduction to uh, coming to know Yeshua, uh, salvation, coming into communion and covenant with Yeshua. And then they came to Jericho and Jericho means a place of fragrance, a sweet breath his life, his soul, his mind, his spirit. And this is a place of almost like um, a place of fragrance, a, a place of conquest, a place of smelling the fragrance of God, uh, a place of communion. And finally, Jordan symbolizes a promised land, a natural promised land, because we know Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River. We know it's a place where the children of Israel crossed over. So it represents a, a deliverance from slavery, from Egypt. They pass over these four places. And then Elijah says, well, if you see me when I go, then you can have a double portion of my spirit. And so what happens is I want a double portion of your spirit. They went to Gilgal, when they went to Bethel, when they went to Jericho, and when they crossed to Jordan, Elijah would say, I'm not leaving you. Wherever you go, I'm going to go. But when he said, I'm going to, leave now. And what do you want? Elijah 
didn't say, I want to come with you. Elijah was going to the promised land. Elijah was going to heaven. I mean, this is our inheritance with Yeshua to be with Jesus. And why was not Elijah ready to go with him? I think that is why Elijah said, oh, you've asked me a hard thing. You know, you want a double portion. He should have said, I'm coming with you. You're not going to leave me behind. I believe they both could have went up in a chariot of fire. But Elijah wasn't ready. And the Lord spoke to me that Elijah in this story is symbolic of the left behind bride. You know why? Because he wasn't ready to go with Elijah. But instead he says, no, I want something. You know, he had his eyes on almost ambitiously. He wanted a double portion of his anointing. He wanted his man, to, the parable of the 10 virgins, the five virgins who went up in that palaguan and they were carried in the night with fire torches to the bridegroom. That, that horse and those horsemen, those horses on fire and chariot of fire represent the rapture in the vehicle that took Elijah up. And for the bride, Jesus is coming back in the twinkling of an eye and we're going up, amen? Like in a whirlwind, just like Elijah, we're going up in a whirlwind as the spirit of the Lord begins to move upon the earth, bringing judgment and we go up at the same time. For, for the world is coming down upon the heads of the wicked like a whirlwind of judgment. But for us, we're going up, hallelujah. It's gonna be uh, a whirlwind that's gonna encompass us of, in glory and take us up to the throne of God. Oh, hallelujah. Elijah wasn't ready. Elijah says, I want something down here. I'm not going to go with you up there. I want your mantle. I, 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 I'm I, ambitious. I want your mantle. I want your ministry. And I want to stay down here. And this is the question I want to ask you. Beloved, is there anything you want to stay down here for? Maybe you've heard that there's going to be a great revival during the tribulation period and maybe some family members are saved and you're saying, Lord, I'm not ready to go with Elijah yet. I'm not ready to go with the Holy Spirit yet. When the bridegroom shouts, I want to stay down here because my children aren't saved. I want to stay down here because I heard that there's going to be a mighty revival and I want God to use me. But beloved, let me tell you, we need to be ready when the bridegroom comes because times are going to be so evil. The Bible says that we should pray that we're worthy to escape the things that are on this earth and stand before the son of man. Things are going to be the worst time of ever in history. So Elijah stayed and he tore his own clothing. He, you know, his, his clothing was not suitable clothing. So he tore his clothing. That means he wasn't ready because he had dirty rags, he, huh? spots, blemishes, wrinkles. But then he covered himself in God's righteousness. Hallelujah. He covered himself in Elijah's mantle. In closing, I just want to share this with you, that there is good news. If you're left behind, it's not totally bad. If you're left behind, there's redemption. If you're left behind, God can use you because the Lord said that a double portion will be upon those who are left behind. You see, those who go don't need a double portion. Elijah didn't need a double portion. He was ready to go when the chariot came. When the chariot separated them and there was a division, like a sifting, like the harvest time, the, the barley was taken and the wheat was left behind. It had to be trampled a little bit. Listen, the Lord wants us to be ready. And I just want to ask you, are you ready? <laughs> Is your heart really ready to be with Jesus? There's nothing down here you want. You don't want anything down here to be left behind. It's a good question, isn't it? And only you can answer that question. But the good news is that there's a double portion coming to those who are left behind because they're going to need it for the times ahead are going to be so dark. They're going to need a double portion of God's spirit. So keep looking at Jesus. There are a lot of people who are looking at Jesus, but Elijah said, if you see me when I'm going, you're going to get a double portion. It's not everybody, not every Christian who's left behind. Many Christians will be left behind. They're not ready. They have unforgiveness in their heart, bitterness, things of that nature. But if you're looking at Jesus, you'll receive a double portion of God's spirit. So the Lord said, prepare. Tell my bride, I am coming. Any minute, the bridegroom is coming. The rain is getting ready to fall. The time of judgment is here. And there's nothing and no one we should stay down here for. 
but to be with our beloved Savior, Jesus, for the wedding of eternity, the marriage supper of the Lamb. Beloved, you are his beloved, and he loves you with an everlasting love. And I believe he wants you to be there on that day. You are his bride. He died for you, and he loves you with an everlasting love. And so he says, my beloved, I'm coming to get you. Prepare. And how do we prepare? Prepare by forgiving others. We prepare by reading our Bible. We, pre we prepare by spending time with Jesus. We prepare by being obedient to him to do what he tells us to do from day to day. And we prepare by going into the highways and byways and telling others, praying for our loved ones and telling others how wonderful Jesus is to bring someone with us. I have really enjoyed spending this time with you today. I'm going to ask you to please tap that like button. It's going to help this video go out to many more people. Not only that, please hit that bell icon because it's going to notify you when I put out new videos. I don't always do just one. Sometimes I do two videos a week and I'm going to increase that as we have more subscribers. We have almost a thousand subscribers when we hit the 1000 help me reach a thousand subscribers send this out to somebody else i believe we were at 978 when i was filming this video so we're very close only 23 more people <laughs> get out there and send it to 23 more people because by monday we want to be over a thousand subscribers hallelujah so that jesus can be glorified and this video can go out to more people so anyway, I love you. So welcome again to our family. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. It's an honor to have you. And I bless you in the name of the Lord. Until next time, God bless you. I love you. And shalom.